Now we get to the fun part. This is where we celebrate 20 years of the LPI at OSU and gush about the wonderful things Waltz has done for all of us. The Diet and Optimum Health Conference is a testament to his legacy, a conference that he created, nurtured, and grew. And as you all know, this year's conference included a tribute to the leadership of Baltz Fry, director of the Institute from 1997 until last year, 2016. To many of us in this room and elsewhere, Baltz Fry has not only been the head, but the heart and the soul of the Institute. So I know I speak for many people in this room when I say when Baltz announced his retirement, it was hard to think about an LPI without Baltz at the helm. He grew the Institute from its very little start at OSU, I think it was him, <laughs> to the fabulous gathering we have here today. Now, I hope while you were enjoying your dinner, you saw the slideshow. We had many pictures of Baltz throughout the years containing many messages from people, LPI alumni, whose whose career, really, Alex wrote this for me. <laughs> I, I don't think he was touching people. <laughs> Many were not able to be here tonight, Baltz, but they wanted to convey their greetings. It is no small testament to his leadership that everyone in the LPI has now come together to honor his legacy and carry on. We know that the house that Baltz built will endure. When he left at the end of the June, it wasn't quite right time to celebrate. We were all kind of, we had a little gathering, but many people were surprised and went, oh, I didn't get to say goodbye. And we didn't want Baltz to plan his own party, so <laughs> now he's wondering about this. So we figured with the 20th anniversary of the LPI, what better time to celebrate? Many people couldn't come. For those, we've gathered those laudations, and we'll, we'll give those to you, and you can read them. Meanwhile, I have another surprise. I'm going to ask that guy, Fred Stevens, to come on up and say a few more words. <laughs> you ready? You did such a good job. Yeah. <laughs> A special friend and long-standing supporter of the Lions Pauling Institute, Joanne Facey is not able to join us today, though she sends her warmest regards and wishes from her home in Georgia. On Joanne's behalf, I'm now going to say a few words about a very special gift that's being made to the Linus Pauling Institute. Gentlemen, would you please unveil the painting? So this painting is part of a collection of 27 paintings by the late Gershon Benjamin, given by the Gershon Benjamin Foundation to grace the walls of the Linus Pauling Institute. This particular painting is being given to the Linus Pauling Institute to honor Balz Frey and his inspirational leadership that has allowed the Linus Pauling Institute to thrive at Oregon State University for the past 20 years. So Joanne Facey and the Gershon Benjamin Foundation present this gift in recognition of Balz's tireless efforts to build and transform the Linus Pauling Institute into what it has become today. 
growing from a small group of six faculty, you saw the slides just before we had dinner, into a robust research enterprise with 12 principal investigators, supported by a team of dozens of students, scientists, and staff. So Baltz, and I'm also saying this on behalf of the entire faculty and the entire LPI, thank you for your direction. The Institute has become a respected name in molecular nutrition. In addition to the scientific accomplishments, and we also know this when we're still in Wernicke Hall, we made many planning sessions for the new building, and this has now at last been become a reality, and at last, this is Joanne's red writings on the on the pillar at the top of the building. Um, because what we're talking about, we're talking about a 105,000 square foot facility with modern laboratories, cutting edge technologies, and the space where we so desperate needed to do our research and to interact and innovate. Because when we were in Echo Hall. We were on four or five floors. It was very difficult to interact. We were all in little rooms. It was very dark. Now everything has been better, and actually we're thriving on that. And to give you a couple of examples from just very recently, I'd like to, um, uh, Viviana Perez just got the NARA 1 yesterday, so this is a good example. Um, we're now back at four R01s. What I always wanted was the metabolic phenotyping facility that has now become a reality. So things are, we are off to a good start with the new director, Richard from Raymond. So simply put, this is my summary. Without your leadership, the Linus Bowling Institute will not be what it is today. So this painting especially will grace the walls of the Linus Bowling Science Center to commemorate everything that you have done to transform the Institute. So on behalf of Joanne and the Benjamin Kirshen Foundation, thank you very, very, very much. And please <laughs> give me Major Dashwood. Oh, excuse me. Rod, please come up to the stage. I, I believe you uh, wanted to say a few words. Okay. <laughs> it, it's really a hard act to follow Fred, so. I'll, I'll do my best. Make sure this is. So Dr. Treber asked if I would try valiantly to bring some class to this occasion by reading a poem. <laughs> and she suggested maybe a, a few lines by Shakespeare or Keats uh, or, or Wordsworth, uh, or maybe some, some great American poets. Um, here we have uh, Emily Dickinson, Sylvia Plath, or Gwendolyn Brooks. This one is not advancing down here. This one is. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, I thought, well, those are good suggestions, but uh, what the heck, I'll just read one of my own poems. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually called uh, Ode to the Director. <laughs> and uh, Bols uh, actually has seen an early iteration of this poem. Uh, what he doesn't know is I actually wrote those lines probably a year and a half before you and I ever met. I was actually on the faculty at the University of Hawaii, I was attending a cancer prevention uh, conference in Canada, and during one of the social outings, uh, George Bailey and I were hiking around the beautiful countryside near Banff. And George was talking at great length about how, uh, how terrific it was that the Linus Pauling Institute was coming to OSU, and they just interviewed uh, candidates for the director position, and he was absolutely thrilled by the youngest candidate, who he said was absolutely the best by a country mile. And he said, this guy comes originally from Switzerland. He's done some fabulous work on cardiovascular disease and vitamin C. Uh, and that he had a magnificent vision for the Linus Pauling Institute. And I was so inspired by that conversation that on the flight back to Hawaii, I put pen to paper. And when I shared those lines with George, he wrote back to me in an email, LOL exclamation mark, or <laughs> something a bit stronger, actually. <laughs> 
So, Bols, uh, you've seen the early iteration. I hope most sincerely you like the updated version. And for the members of the audience who are sensitive or easily offended, uh, please close your ears and look away. Uh, this poem has been rated PG-13. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, parental guidance is advised. <laughs> to sunburn on a scorching day, a nudist beach, so some do say, and neither parent would deny, inspired the curious name Bals Fry. <laughs> That's young Bals there. <laughs> to a sunset at the end of June, a point in time that came too soon, and all with links to LPI, inspired and grateful to Bals Fry. To sunrise in a Texas town, when word of DOH came down, a special tribute, none asked why, respect in full to one Bals Fry. <laughs> uh, this is Roger Federer doing his best impersonation of the marathon runner Bals Fry. <laughs> Roger Federer is the one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> to a sundown in a banquet hall. Assembled guests and speakers all. To our Swiss maestro, not goodbye. Forever goat, the shill, Bals Fry. <laughs> To a sun up in the mountain air. Je t'adore, je a window, I don't care. <laughs> With fun adventures, bright blue sky. Simone and Balthazar, Bals Fry. So, Bals, you were just telling me over dinner that you have a beautiful new property up in the mountains and at the end of the garden he has an outdoor latrine that might be a good place to hang this poem. <laughs> so, so Mahaiser and I have something for you that survived the flooding in Houston and it more impressively United Airlines carrying. So another dear friend and collaborator of the Institute, Francesco Ficioli, was not able to make it here this evening. However, he recorded a personal tribute to Baltz Fry we'd like to play for you. So if we could have the next one. Hi Baltz, hi LPI, hi all, Francesco here. Uh, I guess I was one of the first ones to reach you in Corvallis at LPI. Look, look what I found, Risa Stadium, <laughs> 1999, getting old, getting old. But I remember that, that Beavers, hey, go Beavers, by the way, game. Hey, uh, just would like to thank you so much for hosting me several times at LPI. Uh, I had the, my best research time in my life. Never been so, you know, um, uh, so excited to do research uh, as I was at LPI. Hope to see you soon, Europe, US, uh, elsewhere in the world. And um, y'all take care. I might show up anytime. So y'all be careful. And, uh, and have a great time doing research, enjoy Core Valleys, enjoy LPI. Take care and see you all soon. Bye.
Now, for all of you who attended Baltz's farewell in June last year, may remember that during that ceremony, everyone enjoyed a song written by Professor Kevin Ahern in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics. They're already laughing in the back there. Um, simply entitled Dr. Fry, Kevin has sent us another version of the song to play in tribute. Time's arrived for all of us to say a fond goodbye. We've truly loved the time we've spent with our colleague, Dr. Fry. He demonstrated leadership and grew the LP. To what it is today, and now we thank good Dr. Fry. It wasn't easy doing this, there was 